Heading into the middle part of August, it is going to be getting a lot hotter out there for the Mid-South area, but what type of weather can we expect as we continue to see more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? A meteorologist Austin Onig, this is the mid-August edition of News Channel 3's exclusive Enviro blog, Your Environment, taking a look at different issues and problems around the world and back into the Mid-South. And if you've got anything out there involving cleanups, recycling efforts, conservation, ecology happening around the tri-state area of Tennessee, Arkansas, in Mississippi, please drop me a line, email address down at the bottom of the screen, or again, you can contact me on any of the social media websites that you see down that direction to make sure we can get everybody more involved in keeping our planet a little bit cleaner. Coming up in just a little bit, we'll take a look at air quality in the Mid-South. We'll also take a look at a visitor to the United States who's been rather controversial over the last several months, and again, somebody who has been criticized for, unfortunately, other reasons than her stance on conservation and ecology. We'll also take a look and see about the new hurricane forecast from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and a lot more coming up as well. And again, if you've got questions or concerns or suggestions about what we can cover here, drop me an email at austin.onic at wreg.com. Air quality in the Mid-South area, according to airnow.gov, at least for today when we record this. Again, this is on for Tuesday, the 13th of August, but again, you will be using this website to keep track of how pollution is affecting much of the rest of the Mid-South area. And as of right now, no major problems being seen, but later on through the rest of the week, you can keep up to date with what's going on out there when it comes to forecasts. Again, kind of stagnant atmosphere with a cold front coming on through. We may see less pollution coming our way in the near future, so hopefully that'll stick around for a while. If you're in town for Elvis week, welcome to the Mid-South. Find a way to stay cool out there. Pack along that extra ice water just to be on the safe side as we see some <clears throat> excuse me, decently hot conditions out there. Live view from the grounds of Graceland and looking again as visitors for Elvis Week show up and the candlelight vigil coming up later on this week. Temperatures in the 80s and 90s out there, rather uncomfortable. So if you're heading in town for that around the area, definitely want to make certain you try to stay cool. Spending energy again to get to where you're going does have a cost and an impact on our atmosphere. The fossil fuels that we burn to get from place to place can heat up our atmosphere and in fact have been doing so since the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution. One person trying to bring information to the public on what is going on or at least trying to get more of the public interested and find out more about what is happening to our planet is climate activist teenager Greta Thunberg who is heading to the United States this week taking a neutral carbon powered sailboat to reach the United States instead of hopping on a jet plane. What's been called climate guilt is starting to be applied in many locations to where if you don't have to travel, spending the money to use the fuel to get yourself someplace, adding that extra carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, is starting to get a lot of people thinking about travel and how to reduce the amount of travel that you take out there. So interesting to see what will go on when Thunberg reaches the United States. Unfortunately, a lot of people have been using her Asperger's syndrome as an attack on her, not focusing on the facts, not focusing on climate change. People like Canadian consultant Patrick Moore have been doing a very good job of criticizing her for more of what her physical nature is all about and how she corresponds to how she thinks and as a teenager being rather speaking downwards to her about what goes on and criticizing younger people for their stance on the climate issues. Very interesting to see how this attitude has taken place in the climate deniers area. And if you'd like to read more about this, e and &E News is just one place you can go to to find out more about how these ad hominem attacks or personal attacks have been taking place and how places like the oil processors and gasoline manufacturers have been taking more of a close look, including some of the OPEC officials who are doing a good job of listening to their kids in some cases about why she is doing these protests out there. Another thing that's been going on that you might want to take a look at from the United Nations, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, issued their latest report about land use around the planet. 70% of our planet is ocean. The rest of that for the land surface, we're going to have to figure out better ways of creating food for 8 billion plus people. And with climate change causing problems, it's time for us to really pitch in and around the planet, look at changes 
and better ideas that we can come up with because as of right now our projected use of fossil fuels and all of the climate change caused by the rising carbon dioxide is going to be causing further increases in the temperatures and also looking at the potential of damaging crops or moving crop yields around to different locations on the planet. There's also the possibility of increasing climate refugees, people that will have to leave an area because it's simply unlivable due to that climate change that we as humans are causing. And you can see some more of that, including some amazing graphics on here talking about how much climate change is in the atmosphere and how much more will be in the atmosphere as we go throughout the next 50 to 100 years if we don't start acting on this right now. So very interesting a place to go to for more details on this. If you'd like to see the report for yourself, all you have to do is go to ipcc.ch and you can read the report or the summary for, again, policymakers. Something, again, that you can take a look at here from the United Nations, a good opportunity to learn more about what kind of changes we are making to our planet. The National Hurricane Center for at least Tuesday onwards is showing no development of any cyclones out into the Atlantic. Things are pretty quiet out there because of dry dust moving its way out from areas of the Sahara Desert, and that's doing a very good job of keeping things very quiet across the entire Atlantic Basin. But it may not stay that way because in the course of the next several weeks, we may be looking at the possibility of more hurricanes happening. The National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration has issued a new forecast which shows again a better chance of hurricanes in the course of the latter half of hurricane season. The second half will begin September 10th, so we're very close to the midpoint of hurricane season. We've only had two storms named at this time. Andrea and Barry have been the only two storms in 2019. That leaves still a lot to go as we go throughout the rest of 2019. But as of right now, again, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA for short, is looking at more named storms, 10 to 17 possible named storms in the course of the rest of the year. Out of those, five to nine could become hurricanes, and out of those, another two to four could become major hurricanes or hurricanes of Category 3 status or higher. And that's a bigger increase in what we've seen at this point in time. The likelihood of below normal activity has dropped to about 20 percent overall for the entire Atlantic Basin. So much more active possible. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3. And if you'd like to read that report for yourself, all you have to do is go to the National Hurricane Center or check out NOAA.gov for more information on what to look for there. Okay, taking a look right now at protecting the rainforest, and you can help do that just by viewing some ads at therainforestsite.com. So far for this year, about 11 and a half million clicks viewing advertising has saved over a quarter of a million square feet of land forest space. The sponsors pay for land to not be developed and to remain intact rainforest space. The rainforest, of course, the lungs of our planet, and so far over 5,700 acres have been saved this year in 2019. So some very good news on that. And that's important because unfortunately, the rainforest is under attack. A very right-wing candidate, President Bolsonaro of Brazil, has been doing a very good job of increasing the amount of deforestation going on in the rainforest to the cries and the protest of many governments around the world. One way you can help on that, and we're going to do it right now, all you have to do is go to the rainforestsite.com and click on this big green button, which we are going to do right now. Clicking on this will bring up, again, advertisers to show what they're selling. Just by viewing that, we have helped to save a portion of the rainforest space. It's that simple. So, again, pretty interesting to take a look to see how we can do more with that. And, again, more on that available at the rainforestsite.com. A lot more to talk about when it comes to climate change, pollution, ecology, local events, things of that nature. We'll be bringing you more details on that over the course of the next several days and weeks. So stay tuned for more there. Again, if you've got anything in the Mid-South area that teaches school kids about ecology and 
and conservation. Maybe you've got a cleanup effort like the Wolf River Conservancy or Clean Memphis. A lot of other places have stuff like that going on. And if you've got that, please let us know. Again, email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. That'll do it for this week's edition of News Channel 3's Your Environment blog, keeping you updated on what's going on out there with conservation, ecology, and cleanups around the Mid-South and beyond. And another one coming up next week, so stay tuned for a lot more. Thanks for joining us, and stay tuned for more environmental news coming up with News Channel 3 online.